เรื่องตัวราชการตัวนี้นะครับแล้วก็แจ้งในไลน์เลยดีนะครับที่มีที่ปัจจุบันที่มีที่ไปเรื่องการเป็นอินโฟเรชั่นอันดีนี้ก็จะโฟกัสเจอโพลิสิ่งมันไปติดเป็นโฟมัสติ่งอันเป็นนะครับโฟมัสติ่งเราแบ่งออกเป็นแท่งออกออกเพิ่มเป็นเอเวอเรียนอินเตอร์โมเดลแบบแบบนี้แล้วเนี่ยยิ่งโมชั่นชุดนี้จะคอนดังชุดนี้ตัวแบบที่เราเป็นที่ตัวอีเซียนี้ the great push investing for mental health and today we are investing for our young training young psychiatrists and also investing for the patient so that's what we are here for to know what's the best to manage patient who has schizophrenia so for today the part that I'm going to talk is about the chronic schizophrenia so as I mentioned about the addictive part then I'm going to continue what is going to happen for those who continue having the problem the symptoms we know that Schizophrenia is a chronic illness for sure. So for today, try to move the slide. The title. The management of chronic schizophrenia breaking the barrier. This is the title for my talk. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to share the learning and moderator for this. And then there are three topics that we like to talk about. One, the unmetals in chronic schizophrenia, the challenges in maintenance therapy, and the new hope, whether there is a lie in the medication or probably in the intervention. And we don't, the medication cannot help us anymore to move forward. So maybe or there is a single for new medication. So we know that schizophrenia is a quite common one in every hundred. But we know that it affects more than that. One, okay, for people who have schizophrenia, it affects so many others. And then the good thing is, meaning that so many others can have people who have schizophrenia. So we are one of them. And then. Many people who have schizophrenia not just like a quit, it's not a, not like this one-off event. It's more like a marathon because we're going to deal with that person from the day they come to see the doctor or any mental health professional until the person passes away. Really, it's a all it's a like a commitment that we have to to give to that person until they leave us to go to another world. So it's a marathon. Meaning that, sorry, not everyone will ever to finish the until at the end. Some of them will be have to stop. Some probably only a few will finish, and only a few will get medal at the end, saying that they are completed the the uh, the marathon. And the the rest may be somewhere or just have to take taxi to the end of the road. But we also know that so many people watching, people who are running the marathon, it's like a schizophrenia as well. There are so many people know that they are this special need have and this special with schizophrenia and need to be assisted, but we only watching without helping them, helping to give our hand to make them feel a little bit better and continue managing their lives. We also know that the stages of people with schizophrenia, the first one is the premorbid. This one we do not know, and then the only one that we start to notice the changes is, is that the time, the onset, where the person usually will show uh, dramatic changes in their personality, their behavior, and then they start to share their experiences. Or everyone close to them will notice that they are becoming a different person. So this is the onset. But the illness must started much much earlier than that. During during the prodromal, the prodromal part is the one that we need. This is the one that we thought that if we recognize this part early, we can do something to prevent that. But this research has been going on for quite some time. At this moment, we haven't got much. I uh, evidence to say that we are very good in detecting this early to prevent further complications. But what we know for sure 
Really, the point that if we manage them very well, we probably going to have a better prognosis. And then this part is equally important because usually this part we started to think that they either we only give up on them or we started to neglect them because they thought that we are able to do uh, good already and then we decided not to follow them up closely. Then they may have relapsed and they probably going to have a more strong uh, uh, more complication if we do not monitor them closely. That's what I mean by my response. The ongoing monitoring should be start from the beginning until at the end when the person is delivered. If you look at the cause of the illness, it's not just a straight line from one to the other. It shows how it's very, you know, one way to another. And then during the exit phase, the stabilization phase, the maintenance phase, the care for the treatment will be different. For example, in the exit phase, we are going to manage this part. And then the chronic part is where the, the symptoms started to be slightly different. We are no longer center uh, for the positive symptoms. We go for the other domain of schizophrenia. We go for the negative symptoms, depressive symptoms, positive symptoms. Unfortunately, for this, this part, we are not doing that well. After the introduction of all of the medication that we have so far, we are very good at this. We are very good at this in diminishing these symptoms. However, for all this part, we are not so good. Maybe that's the reason the outcome measure in terms of the effectiveness of the medication. That is, uh, the results are conflicting because we are maybe not looking at the right patient or maybe because we are measuring uh, different symptoms. We are mixed up between the positive and negative symptoms and the negative symptoms of course the treatment is not available yet for the effective treatment. Then when we are talking about again I mentioned about the domain of schizophrenia not just a positive symptom. Positive symptom is the one that we are familiar with hearing voices Delusion, think that we are Imam Mahdi, for example, Jesus Christ, things like that. That is the one that brought attention to us. The family member will bring this patient to the casualty and then need to be seen by the psychiatrist because they behave very abnormally. But there are also other symptoms of schizophrenia, negative symptoms. The patient's no motivation, they don't talk as much as before, and then the family started to think that they the patient may be depressed and then we also have to be careful because negative symptoms and the, the mood symptoms can happen in the same community world. Very a little bit difficult to tease out between these two symptoms. In addition to that, they are also having cognitive deficit, meaning that they are having difficulties in terms of their executive functioning, their intellect, high intellectual activities. Not necessarily that their IQ uh, has been low, lower than other people in the community, but they are having uh, executive functioning. For example, the working memory is probably affected by the illness itself. Then we should not forget about their comorbidity. The patient not just having schizophrenia, but they are also having other psychiatric disorder, especially the substance. Substance abuse is uh, always the comorbidity with the schizophrenia. So, I just want to highlight here that we are not just about the positive symptoms, not just about it. We have to look into this. So, in the chronic phase of the illness among the patient with schizophrenia, this domain of symptoms, the one that more prominent, the uh, one that needs more intervention, and the medication for this, we are hoping that they have more, much better medication will come. Uh, in for what for us to, to do. And then I have to remind myself again, uh, in any way we like to deal, we like to start something, we like to make a new a new thing. But once it comes to the maintenance part, we are very bad in that like that. For example, you see that this the hotel for example is a very new hotel. We come back in two years time, probably it's not as nice as this anymore. Because the maintenance is not as, not very good. So the same thing in many patients with schizophrenia, especially in the chronic phase, we started to become compressive. 
and then we started to uh, we, uh, trust our patient too much or we started to trust our medication too much until the patient started to show the sign of relapse. And we know the more the patient has uh, a system of relapse, the poorer the, the, poor, the patient is going to become. So the aim of the treatment, of course, the functional recovery. However, this aim is for depression, this uh, major depressive disorder for depression. Can we use the same thing for schizophrenia? This is still debatable. Because the, the patient, and then of course the family members want to know this. Doctor, can my son be cured from schizophrenia? That's the common question. And it's a fair question. Because you said there's an illness, and then there is a treatment. So can your treatment cure my son or my daughter? Unfortunately, we can't give a straight answer, a clear answer yes or no, because the answer can be in a one or two pages to be the complete answer. Even then, we cannot give the complete answer, because we still uncertain. There's so many things that say uncertain. But for sure, we can say that this illness can be treated, and we can together we can make a better, uh, can make a a person live with a better life, for sure. Not just with medication, but some other intervention. So, looking at one person, we not just about the symptoms. We have to look at their social part, their occupation, their interpersonal uh, relationship between uh, with family members and other people in the community, and also their self-care. That is a that's what they need to be dependent in the community. Yeah. The clinician usually interested more on the domain of the symptoms, but the family members more interested in this. So we need to have in mind that maybe some conflict arise because of different systems of aim to get which one to be open. So this is another negotiation that needs to be done between two most important uh, person in the patient. Uh, patient's life. One is the family member, another is their fitting mental health professional. The aim needs to be uh, incongruent or meaning that they supposed to have the same aim. So, this is the, the goal, what I think is the goal for patients who have schizophrenia. Not just about the acute stage, we have to focus in on the long term, whether we can reduce the frequency, duration, and the severity of this episode so that the patient won't get another episode. So we want to prevent that. And then we also have to look at the overall morbidity and mortality of the problem. And more importantly, we have to look at the psychosocial functioning. There's no point if the patient that doesn't have any more positive symptoms, but they do not do anything at home. Because the, as I mentioned earlier, the family members are looking at the function and then they want to see the improvement. Otherwise, they probably do not think that the patient has improved. So that is what we are, as a clinician, should look into it as well. But most important thing is the, as a clinician and a family member, we have the same goal to make the person feel that they are, uh, they are, there is a future for them, there is a hope, and their life is much more meaningful. We are not talking about remission or recovery here, we are talking about meaningful remission, meaningful recovery, whether the, the person who has schizophrenia at the end of the day, after the treatment, feel that their life is worth living, that they are happy about it, their quality of life is not just about no, not just about no symptoms or having a job, having a like a cashier in the supermarket. But they have to enjoy it and then feel there are some meaning to it. That's what we should aim for for all our patients who have schizophrenia. So I come into the sixth time for the chronic patient with schizophrenia. Uh, I to, of course, we can please speak to M4M. So maybe by the end of this workshop, probably we have track M or 13M. So this is what the 6M to start with. One is the minimize. Then minimize 
we know that the symptoms, some of them still having the symptoms. So our aim is to minimize as much as possible in terms of the symptoms. So if they are still having voices, that's okay. Minimize it as much as we can. And then we also have to look at other symptoms that they probably can, uh, probably can have as well. And then we modify the stress off. If there is uh, some issue that the patient and the family members arrive, the family member has, we probably have them to, to settle about it. Maybe the parents have higher expectations. We have to reduce it and then look at the real situation whether the patient can uh, put in it or not. And then have to manage their comorbidity. If the patient was also taking drugs, or smoke, or cigarettes so much until the parents are worried about their health situation, then of course the money that they need to, uh, to give to the patient to buy the cigarettes every day. That also has to look into that as well. We have to monitor the, uh, uh, monitor the risk because the medication that we give is not as clean as it is because there are side effects. But as long as we monitor the side effect is is uh, is uh, bearable and is uh, considered as safe, and then we also have to maintain their mental state. We need have to keep them in remission as long as possible. Again, once they have more relapse, the prognosis will become uh, much poorer. And then we have to engage them, maximize the engagement to bring them out, make sure that they will uh, meet up with other family members, not just the patient or the athlete, but also with other people in the community, so that they are much more confident, much having a higher capacity, and their life is much, much more meaningful. So I hope the message that I want to uh, come and hope to, uh, to get across today is not just about remission, but a re uh, remission with a meaning, is a meaningful remission. So, the barrier, what are the barriers? So, these are the barriers. Non-compliant, not taking medication. And then, uh, despite that, some of the patients, they have taking medication regularly, but the symptoms do not disappear because of the this uh, treatment resistance. So that also could lead to the outcome, whether it's going to give a good outcome or not. The comorbidity, especially the structure, is another reason, the barrier for a good outcome. And then, we mentioned about in psychosocial intervention. The problem is whether the psychosocial intervention is available or not to the patient. We are talking so much about other activities that the patient uh, should involve on, whether there are any venue or not for them to get involved, whether there are, there are enough uh, assistance for them to go into the, uh, to the place, for example. We, we know whether, we know that there is a, the taxi fence is not, not safe, so whether there are some kind of assistance for them to go to one place or another without further, further, even further to their family members. The quality of impairment and then the social exclusion could be due to smart or not. So, uh, talking about non, uh, non adherence or non compliant, not talking medication. So, as a clinician, I have to ask myself whether the medication that I give is really the best for the patient or not. We have quite a number of leads for medication as indicated from the support And now we have a good one. And then we have to ask. Whether the ACTP and the psychotic are they exactly the same because they belong to the same group or they are not? Maybe they are only, you know, only put under the same group but they behave totally differently. So, as a clinician, I try to choose what is the best for this patient. Unfortunately, there are so many other limiting factors as well. One, one thing for sure is the financial constraint, whether it's a financially feasible or not. So, we always thought that the uh, antipsychotic would be different, but actually it's not. They are not exactly the same. I think the next two slides is a very academic, but I will skip it uh, very uh, very fast. So I thought it was for the training and then for the training. Feel free to, uh, to uh, because we like to give this slide anyway. 
So feel free to ask me if there is any question at all. I think for the address is probably a little bit too much to digest in terms of the information to give for the next few slides. So as I mentioned, we have, we have a lot of uh, options when we're talking about education. We have quite a number here. So we can choose which one we want, we want to give. So of course we don't choose randomly. It must be there is a reason and education for us to do so. So this is the the neurotransmitter, I mean the receptor involved for each of the medications. Even though they are belong to the same group, they are all considered atypical and psychotic. All are costly, but when we go to the receptor, they are not exactly the same. That is the reason why one medication will have a different advantage compared to other medication. And then, interestingly, the medication, for example, the cellular, will act differently on every individual. That is the reason we cannot for sure say that when you start on this medication, this is the symptom that you're going to have, this is the benefit that you're going to have. Because again, there are so many interactions that we are not really know what the medication goes into our body system. So if we want to look uh, in terms of the color, so we can have uh, this dramatic. Uh, so different, so even though they are below to the same group again, but they look different in color. Of, uh, of course, this is a meaning that is uh, orophilized by this receptor. So I choose this yellow uh, just because it looks uh, better, not nothing to do with per se. So, right? so it uh, really uh, looks uh, much nicer. So, and then this is uh, the study to show that we, when we are talking about the treatment, we have to talk about evidence base. So this is the evidence. There is an article in Lancet. Uh, it's a very high synthetic journal. Uh, compared between the first generation and second generation. And how we go to the conclusion of this? And then they found that different antipsychotic act differently depend on the domain of the uh, uh, the symptom of people who have even more. And then that's why we have to choose uh, the medication according to the evidence that we have and then what patient that we uh, we are dealing with. So when we are talking about treatment, we have to look into this. We have to look into the efficacy, meaning that when the drug works, so if the drug works, can the patient tolerate the side effect? And then uh, we have to ask whether they are going to take the medication consistently. Are they going to continue taking the medication? This is what we mean when we say that this treatment is effective. They work, they are, they are working, and then they are safe, no much uh, satisfied, and then the patient wants to take. So, it's not an easy thing to do. I mean, there's not an easy uh, issue because it depends so many other things. The patient probably has their own reason whether the, uh, the treatment is effective or not. And of course, the patient has their own reason. But at the end of the day, the medication that works is the one that the, the one that the patient takes. So regardless how much and how expensive the medication, if the patient doesn't take, so it's no point. So the effective treatment, not the medication is effective, but the delivery delivery process also must be effective. The same thing for the psychosocial intervention, any program, not the program must work, but the Consent, the delivery of the process needs to be effective as well in order for the benefit to be there at the end. So these all the reasons, the patient and then the family member, even the, the, the I mean, I'm not sure whether some of you can identify with this or agree with this or not. Because they they they, they really these all the common and reasonable questions to ask to get a sexual definition. For example, do I really need to treatment? Am I going to be addicted to it? What is the side effect? So these are the reason why the patient probably doesn't take the medicine because their 
question not be answered. So, before we prescribe, we have to bear in mind these are the questions that we have to, for example, to make the, to satisfy them so that they will continue to take the next step. So the reason, the reason for stopping medication usually due to the symptoms not being effectively treated or the side effects. So this is the shot, uh, whether it is uh, not able to tolerate or it's not effective. So show that the most important thing is the treatment needs to be effective first. Usually once the treatment is effective, the family, the patient will, ever, will still want to continue taking. So that's uh, the message that I, I think I put into the table whether which one is more important, the effectiveness or the tolerability. Of course we know that the quality uh, is both are important, but which one is more important for the patient and the family member. So we are in the right uh, setting where some of us can discuss later and then give opinion. So maybe the studies here is not necessarily the correct one. So we can sh share our own anecdotal experience to say it a totally or disagree with the findings here. So the non compliance is a very big issue, really. So we said that 50 to 75 percent stop taking medication after one to two years. And then the cost is uh, a lot. Actually, the cost of not taking medicine is much, much worse than the, the cost of the medication itself. So we do not do justice or justify the cost of a medication that we ask our hospital to provide if we don't take medicine. So that's an important. Uh, the issues of, of non-compliance. And all uh, the studies show there are so many factors that think, uh, associated with non-compliance. Poor insight, for example. And then our perception in terms of the medication. And then the, we also can use their previous experience. If they are non-compliant before, more likely they are not going to be compliant now. And then the good thing is the poorer therapeutic alliance. What I think, what I, the third I said is an important thing because there is something as a clinician, we can do something about it. It's easily for us to improve the therapeutic alliance with our patient and their family member to improve the experience. Again, I want to go into this is a study again to, to, I think uh, the study is important for us to uh, use as evidence day. But the reality, the clinical experience, our own experience also is very important. So this is uh, the, the venue for us to discuss and then share. So, oh, I want to, uh, this is the last uh, few words I'm going to talk about the last experience in schizophrenia. So, we know it's costly and then we have to measure somehow how to assess the non-degenerate. If we have a good heart saying that all our patients are compliant, meaning they are very naive, they are just a new clinician, for example. So seeing that our patients will comply, because they have so many reasons and then there are so many hurdles between the medication and the patient because they take the medication into the mouth. So we have to improve our therapeutic alliance and then we have to remember this. Experience and persistent communication is the basic foundation to achieve long-term outcome in addition to psychosocial intervention. But we need the medication as the basic foundation. So this is what the hypocritical said. And this still apply now. If we cannot, we have to do this two things. To have or at least to do no harm. And we have to remember that, as I mentioned earlier, our medication, and this psychotic especially, has a several side effects that we have to, be, uh, to keep in our mind. But I think we are getting much better nowadays uh, to look into the complications arise from this psychotic. And we are doing that. We monitor uh, this 
is part of our metabolism. So this is the metabolic syndrome that also affects our patients, not just because they're taking McDonald's, because they're taking our medication and also their lifestyle as well. So this is the more M1, the monitoring part that we have to do. So this uh, again, it was not just uh, the weight gain, the weight gain we need to diabetes, hypertension, all these people are good uh, ingredients to help cardiovascular events and it leads to so many other complications. So we know that our patients who have schizophrenia, they are not just having so much uh, to face already, but they also die faster than the rest of us in the community. So, we have to remember that not just medication, but we have to look into other issues, other problems that we have to control. And then what other thing that we are going to give to them will be discussed further uh, for, uh, throughout this workshop, uh, tonight and uh, tomorrow. So I hope we probably can help to change the life of our patient from dark and gray, dark here, to a little bit gray and to become as beautiful as this. I think if we come together with integration of medication plus psychosocial intervention plus the clinician and the family members and the rest of the community come hand in hand to have this view uh, is not impossible. So with that, thank you.